All right, so last time we did the DC uh, supply side, we showed you all our converters, all the relays, and all the fuses um, with kind of how everything is wired up. Um, we've got 48 volts coming in here, we've got 12 volts coming in here, and then we had this little lead down here that was a selector between do we want to run off the 48 volt or do we want to run off the chassis battery. So the reason we want to do that is because if something were to happen and we lost our 48 volt battery or something went wrong with it or just some emergency happened, we could flip a switch inside and it would take and transfer the power to now be powered by the chassis system. So um, that way, if we lose power um, with this main battery system, we still have access to all our lights, all our pumps, uh, chargers, uh, fans, uh, all kinds of stuff like that. We wouldn't have, of course, um, any AC other than an auxiliary inverter that we have on the other side, and we'll show you that. Um, and we wouldn't have our air conditioners. So those two things would be out. So um, we'll show you the other side, how we've wired that All in. Right. So these are our two 8D batteries that power the starter and the engine and the lights and all that stuff. This is what the bus actually drives off of. <clears throat> so the previous owner had installed these two solenoids here. So one of them controls the auxiliary battery function, which what that did was when you flip the switch on, there was a set of, I think, about four lead acid batteries that were in here. Um, I think only two of which were hooked up, but it would it would then make a circuit complete between these batteries and those batteries. There's also an inverter switch in there, which powers this one here, which gives power to this little, little inverter here, that's on the back wall here. So this inverter, was used, um, that was the main inverter for the entire bus. So when he had it, that's the inverter that he had, and I believe inside he had it going to two plugs. It might have just been one plug that was underneath uh, the main sofa, and it was labeled as, you know, inverter only. So all the rest of the bus ran on shore power only. So in order to get power to the rest of the bus, you'd have to plug in or you'd have to plug in and run the generator. So there was a way to, to shore power in um, the plug into the, a generator receptacle and it would make the loop and it would generate power and so that's how he could power the bus when it was off grid. So we've changed that now and it runs off our batteries. Um, but like we said, in an emergency situation, we want to be able to run off of these two batteries. And so these two solenoids um, did that for us already. So this one, all we did was run that this white wire back here. Um, that's the wire that goes to the pin over there that we showed. So we ran the wire into here and it goes to the output side of the solenoid. So when that solenoid is triggered, then it'll that'll have plus 12 volts. What that'll do is then send 12 volts into our, uh, our uh, battery bay, and then that will trigger those relays to then all switch because they're all hooked together. So they will all switch so that all the 12 volts will then come from a, another chassis source that we have on that side. All right, so this is the switch panel I was referring to. And so this button here is the aux battery, which triggers the first one, and then here's the aux inverter which will trigger uh, the auxiliary inverter, that small little one, to turn on. And so with that small little one, we had planned to power the refrigerator plus one more just auxiliary emergency um, outlet. So those two then will get power uh, from this little guy. Otherwise, if everything's running fine, everything runs off the big inverter. All right, so we're back in the electrical bay. The white wire that we ran from the, the, uh, the solenoid out there goes across the bus, um, then back across here, then down, and then comes through here, back behind here, and then ends up right at this post. So this post then hooks to all the positive leads of the solenoids so that they all fire at once. And so, um, 
when we put 12 volts on this, it will trigger the relay so that it then draws power from these two posts. So these two posts are chassis positive and chassis negative right here. So you can see the negative is hooked right to here through this thick cable, and the positive is hooked up here through this thick cable, which then goes uh, with a big giant like four out cable. So in the case of an emergency, we would shut this switch off here, um, which would then, you see now we have zero volts, essentially zero volts coming into here, um, because we don't, there's no power coming out of these because we've turned the power supply off to them. And now we want to power it off of these two, uh, off of the chassis battery. So in order to do that, we have to flip the switch on the inside. Um, so we'll go in there and flip it real quick. So now when the flip is switched, we see we have 12.6 volts that's coming directly from this battery. So the reason we know that as well is because the voltage on the battery from the chassis is 12.6 and the voltage coming out of these is 12.1. So we kind of know that, that, um, that it's drawing from a different source. So right now these are being powered by the chassis battery. All right, so we're wiring and we've run all of our DC wires, um, which are 10 to uh, marine grade cable, and they're quite thick. Um, we got black and white because we didn't realize that you could get black and red. So um, we kind of screwed that up a little bit. So we're gonna use black for negative and white for positive. Um, it should be fine, um, just as long as we remember black is always negative. So anyway, we're wiring up to our fuse box now, so we're cutting all the wires and trying to get them all organized and in the right place. So this is the beginning of it. We've um, just kind of set everything up. We're not really, we haven't, re we've left enough slack to where when we have a real cable tie solution, we can put them up there and make them look nice and get them out of the way. Um, but for now, they just, they're always just kind of hanging in our way. <laughs> so anyway, um, we're gonna try to wire this up and hopefully then we'll have 12 volt circuits and um, essentially the wiring will be done then. So we're wrapping up the wiring out here. We have wired up all of our DC circuits now. So they're these. Um, as I said before, we used um, 10 gauge marine cable. So they've all been wired in here in our circuits and they've all been labeled now. So they're all labeled. And so we can see that fuse one corresponds to relay one, 
which corresponds to converter one. So it's that way, and then the last two share two, um, since they're 20 amps, uh, they share two 10 amp circuits. So we're almost done out here. Um, when we're finished, we've got a couple more wires to run for the uh, Color Control GX and a couple network cables to run um, because that's how it communicates with the different parts of the system. So when it's done, we will wrap these up um, and protect them and then just start uh, wire managing and, and kind of getting them up and out of the way all throughout the bottom. and then. All right, so we are hoping not to have to use a generator much, but we're realistic enough to know that there may be times where it's overcast or we're not getting much solar or something happens to our solar um, or and we can't plug in or our battery gets too low. There may become a situation where we need to run a generator. And so our Victron has a place for a dedicated um, input for a generator. So we are going to wire, this is a 30 amp cable, um, we're going to wire this 30 amp cable in and um, just get it all wired in and tidied up and we'll probably just roll up the cable and stick it in the bay for now um, and then we'll see as we travel if we have generator use is becomes kind of a regular thing then we'll find a more permanent solution um, maybe somewhere near the engine, maybe in the back where we can put a generator where it, it kind of lives. But for now, we're hoping that with very little generator use, we kind of, it just, we store it in a bay and then if we have to, we'll pull it out and start it and, and, and use it that way. So we'll see, but we are gonna wire this in um, just as a just-in-case measure. All right, so we're working on tidying up the wires. So you can see they're kind of just hanging out here, sort of loose. We've used some of these Velcro wraps just to keep them somewhat orderly. But what the uh, what was in here before was these kind of nail plastic things, and they just sagged over time and just didn't hold it very well. So what we're going to try to use are these um, other oh, conduit clamps. So they come in different sizes. We got them in one inch and a quarter, one inch, three quarter, and one half, I think, just depending on how many wires were in here. And so these will hold this bundle, I think, quite well without having us have to worry about chafing the sides or um, you know, having the wire kind of cut on this. Um, we're just pinning them up for now, but when we go to actually finish this off, um, we're going to wrap all the wires in uh, this non-adhesive kind of vinyl stuff that will help protect the wires and help keep them all neat and orderly and just kind of tuck them out of the way. So we still have to run one more wire and that's for bay lights. Um, just we're going to do uh, lights in each of the bays uh, that's going to be like a 12 volt light. So that's the last wire we should have to run um, and then we'll think about wrapping them. So we've run our network cables and all that other stuff. So we should be ready to go. Um, so we're gonna finish this up, tidy it up a little bit. Okay. All right, so we've tidied up the wiring. We've got it all up. We have not done the wrap yet because we still have one more wire, just like everything, there's always one more thing to do. So this wire is designated as the bay light wiring. So there will be bay lights in each of the bays and so we'll have to run one more run of cables into each of the bays. But we have tucked them all in, so they're all tucked up and up along the top where they won't get in the way. Um, using those plastic clamps that we talked about earlier. And um, it's all been routed to where it needs to go, either in a bay or inside. Um, we've left enough uh, extra cabling that we will be able to hook up whatever we need to hook up, at least things that have multiple runs, at least the very first thing. So if it's an outlet or it's a light, or something that we've left enough to get to the very first thing and then we'll figure out 
how we're gonna wire the inside when we start doing the inside. But for now, we're gonna call electrical done out here. So I think we're gonna wrap it up.